All right, so uh, how do you guys are seeing me? You're seeing me on the big screen? Are good? So if you, all of you can mute yourself. And uh, all right, so welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining. I'm happy with uh, just whoever has shown up. I know that um, the timing for this is a little late, I don't know why I thought that if I do later, it, it's nice outside, people don't want to be sitting in front of the screen, so I thought I'll do it at nine o'clock, you can get into your pajamas and listen to me if you're bored or if you like. And uh, so that's why I did it late, and I think that's one of the reasons why um, there were about 15 people signed up, but you know, it's too late for people, but that's okay. So I am really excited to uh, share this with you. Um, about a couple of months ago in, I think, end of April, I started with when immunity was all the talk, immunity is still all the talk. And I had already provided all the attend, you know, all my people with, um, you know, ways to build immunity with Ayurveda, herbals and vitamins and lifestyle, et cetera, et cetera. And so what I really wanted to, and even, you know, that was not enough. People were still fearful and frantic and uh, thinking that what else do they need to take? And, you know, what else do they need to do physically? And so that just dawned on me that if we pivot from a place of fear, no vitamin or herb is going to suffice. So I did a talk on spiritual immunity which um, I, it was a podcast and actually listened to my own podcast today. And because um, I never listened to them. Once I've talked, I want nothing to do with it. And um, so I felt that with so much coming to surface and what's coming to surface is we are becoming conscious, I think. Definitely our physical health. And what's also rising to the surface are emotional and mental well being. And, you know, again, and another thing that's coming to the surface is we are saying the word spirituality because we are witnessing a shift, a shift that's happening globally. And it's not possible not to not to kind of notice that there is something bigger than all of us can fathom that is happening behind the scenes. So, so there is an internal process going on with each one of us. There's an internal global process that's going on in each one of us. And this process is, um, can be very overwhelming or numbing. So in response to that, many times it's a natural reaction to dim down or to dumb down and to just do the basic nitty gritty, which is a great coping mechanism. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing is wrong with really anything. Okay. It's our thinking makes it so. So I want to make that clear and put your mind to rest. You are all, we are all at a perfect place at the perfect time. And I think there hasn't been a greater time to be alive than now because there's so much, um, so much momentum, uh, so much energy being generated. So when the energy is being generated, when things are churning, you know, when something, when we are churning something, we're not just going to get the nectar, we're also going to get the poison. And we enjoy the nectar, but we also have to have the inner grit to be able to taste the poison, okay? The tasting the poison is going to turn that into the nectar. So we live in a paradoxical world. Nothing exists without the other. So um, there's, a, there's a lot that can be said about that. And I'm going to you know, try to keep it, contain myself so I can... Uh, walk you through uh, my thought process and see if that thought process resonates with you. And then I'll share with you 
a couple of months ago when I did this visual immun immunity webinar, I, I knew that there was something like a, a, a program or something that I wanted to put together, very short and quick and dirty, but really giving people a nudge to go to the next level. And after that, so many things were happening. I forgot about that until I was reminded when I sent the newsletter saying, okay, something, people really need to understand Ayurveda because um, Ayurveda is not just herbal medicine. The myth is that Ayurveda, can you now give me a non-drug drug? Can you give me that magic herb? And there's no such thing. Ayurveda actually is your whole being from the physical all the way to the spiritual. So the mental, emotional, the energetic, and that all includes the conscious and the subconscious. And you can take it all the way back to your past lifetimes and pure consciousness, because in the realm of pure consciousness, there's no separation between this lifetime or that lifetime. So Ayurveda is this big and a deep a place of study so when I, in my practice in Ayurveda, yes, I, people come to me for physical ailments, but that's where the drama is being played. That's where the, the things are showing up. We don't stay there because the story is beyond, beneath the physical. So there's a story to the symptoms. And so that's, that's the whole big picture. So first, so when I started this webinar and I thought, I'm just going to share with people, you know, you're, you're the building blocks of Ayurveda, the, the doshas and how to, how to, you know, look at the natural rhythms and your body's rhythms and how to adjust the diet and how to adjust the lifestyle. And that didn't, you know, that, that did nothing for me. I'm like, you know, so we, you know, can give you all this information and send you all on your merry way. Um, so then I, I decided that that's not what this is. We have the information. Really, we can Google it. <laughs> there's, there's no Ayurveda, you know, you can Google it that, you know, and you'll get the information. So I decided that it's not the information we need. We need a transformation. Yes, we need the right information, but I think that's the easy part. What needs to happen is transformation. That's the hard part. I think that that's the process that we are all in of transformation, but we may not know that, or we may not all be tuned into that. So what I mean by transformation that you are no longer the same tomorrow. Transformation on a physical level, you know, even on every level, I think as life goes on, if we stay open and live, it's kind of inevitable, unless you really come in the way of it. And there are many of us who do, who do. But then there is that conscious transformation, where we become the witness of all that is changing for us, and how do we want it to change for us? So transformation has to do with where we are, what in our life is needing to transform. So when we get to the other side, we have something other than where we have been because that was limiting us. So, and even the transformation, yes, this is all nice and fine, but you know, just like when we, when we need to cook a meal, we take all the raw ingredients. To get the meal, we need fire. So we have, you know, transformed the raw material into a delicious dish. We needed fire. So what we need is fire. What we need is inner fire. That's the inspiration. So, so often, I'm sure you all, all have experienced this, that we have the information. Like I said, information is not where this is at because information is at our fingertips. It's very readily and easily available. But what do we do with that information? We need to use that to transform it. And 
we sit at a, at the at the place where we have all this information we are kind of sitting at the edge feeling like there's there's a calling perhaps there's something more that i ought to be doing there's something deeply that's shifting inside of me and what that something is and what happens when we can't find the way or we don't are not aware of you know the process that it might take or what to do with all the you know the the kind of the 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 stuff that's uh, stirring up inside or we don't know what to do with it it becomes overwhelming so what we do we kind of put it aside and we you know turn on the netflix or have some chocolate or whatever because we don't know what to do with it or we talk to somebody and when we talk to you know our friends we talk about it they get their opinions and because you've already kind of let it out through a weak channel it thins out and you forget about it until the next time so transformation requires it requires pressure and it requires heat okay so when we prematurely lift the pressure which means you know we you know talk to somebody too quickly tell them all that's going on with them, with us and then they you know it gets thinned out the pressure you have it's a very important ingredient what we have done is we no longer have that ingredient to transform second ingredient is fire fire is that inner fire so where do we get that fire and i think that every single one of us have an inner fire we just haven't learned we just don't know what to do with it or we have put, we have put so many layers and layers of you know doubt and fear and conditioning and judgment and confusion over it that it's lost somewhere so what i you know hope to do is kind of lead you uh is kind of talk about how to how to uh light that fire and how to keep it lit I'm admitting another person and how to keep it lit through the process and what does that mean because when we light the fire every little shift that we make it's pivoting from a much bigger place. and it's pivoting from a much bigger place we have naturally more possibilities available to us and um so that's that's and how do we and that's that's where i am you know kind of taking you for the next uh, 15 20 minutes so the fire is in the you know there's a big big word you know purpose what is my purpose and so that the fire really comes from asking the bigger question and the bigger question doesn't mean that you have to be at a different level of consciousness it doesn't matter where you are even when you are when we are making a shift making a change a dietary change we ask um why am I, well, you know i ask like, why why do you want to make a dietary change yes i want to become healthy but still why do you become want to become healthy so you become healthy what then well and that's the question that i want you to ask and many times we have to sit in the question and wait for the answer so the question asking doesn't mean the answer is readily available we keep asking the question to expand our mind to expand our awareness so we enter into this greater field of awareness where the answers will come and the answers come in the way of knowing in the way of your intuition or your gut feeling and um you know like you know i shared with you i thought i was just going to share you know this 10 15 slides of what are you better with you and be done with it and then i thought no 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 people need to be fired up they need inspiration to make the changes because that's where the struggle is that's where i do the work with people they know what to do but the struggle comes in making the changes and that's where we get into the deeper the psychological the subconscious the energetic and the spiritual well, once i create a shift there that the physical changes lifestyle changes just become a natural byproduct of that they become internally and so 
that process for me from talking about Ayurveda and all the way to, you know, the inspiration to get the fire, it was just an easy process. I just kind of kept on following until it fit right, until it fired me up, until it charged me up. So the number one thing to do, no matter where you're at, is ask the bigger, bigger question. The bigger question is, why is this is happening? Why am I living during this time, 2020, June 25th? What is being asked of me? What am I, what am I asked to be? And in many ways, this is such a, this is such a powerful opportunity for us to shift, especially, you know, for all of us, if we've been struggling in our life before, but physically, emotionally, you know, spiritually, in our family relationships or in our careers, this is giving us that opportunity to look at that and see what we want to take away when we move beyond this time. So this is a powerful opportunity. So when you ask the bigger question, the, your purpose becomes, or your dharma is what you are meant to do. That is where you will be led to. And it's not a one-shot deal. And you continue, when you continue to ask the question, it keeps on getting refined and refined. I started teaching yoga 25 years ago. And yoga now has organically just gone. There are enough people doing yoga, and I'm led to Ayurveda. Ayurveda started with you know, herbal, nutritional, and all of that. Now I just come into healing, and this just is where it feels right. So it's a process. So ask a bigger question. The bigger question will lead you to your purpose. What is it that you are here to do? And I think when we align with our purpose or our karma, that's what lights our fire. that that's what lights your fire so what are we here to do at the soul level we actually are here to serve a purpose even if we become you know self-centered you will notice that there is a you know self-centeredness does not equal happiness because at the soul level we are actually here to serve the soul wants to experience, it wants to evolve, and it wants to be of service, to carry the bigger message to humanity. So when we ask the bigger question, your purpose becomes clear, and that's what lights up the fire. When the fire is lit, the light, whether it is spiritual life, psychological life, or your physical life, becomes a product of that. It becomes natural. It becomes easier to make the changes because they are in alignment with your purpose. So the second thing to ask, is my life in alignment? Example would be, suppose you're trying to eat healthy, but you go to the grocery store and you buy everything that is not healthy. So your environment is filled with things that you don't want to eat. So what happens is that the, what your personal desire and your environment are no longer in alignment. That produces conflict. That brings you know conflict and stress, and you are trying to uh, fight against. Them. So the place to start to alignment when you go get groceries is to buy what you need. So there's no conflict. You don't have junk food at home. You can't eat it. Especially now when you're quarantined, you know, going to the grocery store is an easy thing. So, so that's what I mean by alignment. When we are aligning, so on a bigger scale, when we align with our purpose, because the purpose is soul driven and our soul has been here before it came into the body then the universe or God will help you so you can be the co-creator. So alignment of, it doesn't matter where you are on the level of your consciousness, aligning yourself with that what's apparent to you, your heart's desire is, your soul's purpose is, is going to, is life soliciting without knowing the universal help. So our higher purposes are always uh, appreciated 
and are always encouraged and are always supported. Anytime we are trying to do something for the higher good, you are supported. It's, it's about trusting that. So finding the purpose and asking the bigger question and, and understanding how to align the life. So I think when there's alignment, you're no longer alone. You are being supported by um, the higher powers. And that co-creation, that ability to tune in to that which is bigger is going to keep the fire lit. So now there is a flow. Now we are not just going to be dancing around the surface. Well, I wanna make dietary changes. You make dietary changes, you do it for a while. And after a while, you know what, I'm getting, I'm getting sick of it. I don't want it. You know, I, you know, you want what you want. And then, oh, you know, so many times people come to me that I was doing really good and then I fell off the wagon. I was doing really good, then I didn't want to do it again. So what happens is, you know, again, and the third or the fourth thing to understand that this process of transformation is a big space. It's a big dynamic space that we, we learn with the time and practice and skill on how to navigate, on how to ask. Many times why we go to the extreme is because we know what to do there. The going to the extremes is unknown. It's a narrow place and we know what to do. It's easy, it's safe. So that's why many times when, you know, when they are, I'm going to just give food an example because it's an easy example is, you know, I'm going to watch everything I eat. So they, you know, cut down, they become very strict about it. And that's what they do. Well, they continue to do that for a while until they just can't stand it. And then they just throw all caution to the wind, wind and then they go to the other extreme, which is binging. It's like, I don't care, I've had it. So the trans place of transformation is neither one of those extremes. It's really coming in the middle of this gray area. This gray area is asking that we are awake, that we have we create this moment to moment uh, wakefulness, moment to moment awareness. We ask the questions. We stay present. We stay present to what is. What am I experiencing? Where is this coming from? What does this feel like? What do I do with that? Can I stay with this? These are the things we ask. And more we ask, more we develop this inner grit to, um, to work with that. So that's the gray area. That's the big unknown. And with practice, we, you know, Again, we begin to understand that the spark that we're looking for is actually in the unknown. The unknown becomes known by our imagination, by our ability to connect with that, that quantum field that's already there. So, um, and how do we, you know, and how, when we are at this bigger place, when we are asking the bigger question, we integrate in the bigger question that the smaller, um, the answers to our smaller day-to-day -day affairs, how to eat, how to live, what to, what to do, what to be, it becomes answered. But when we, if we keep um, kind of hanging out on the surface, on just a physical level, it becomes, it becomes old. It becomes old because it's, we need to go to a place where our fire is lit. When our fire is lit, like, and the alignment is there, and we develop the skill to be in this place of wakefulness or awareness, so we can continuously ask what is being presented and staying present to what's being, being presented. Then the physical life that we wanted to change, it just, becomes, it just becomes a byproduct. It becomes easier. So in order to get physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually healthy, instead of staying at the physical and just banging our head at the physical, I want to take you all the way to the bigger picture 
because we've been doing it backwards, right? We, we have a you know, physical ailment, we run to the doctor. We one, go from one specialist to the next. We try different diets and we don't really get what we want because we actually don't even know why do we want what we want. We haven't asked that question. That question is really important at this time. We can't be walking around, you know, sleeping and zombies. Like we can't be walking around, you know, dumbed down or dimmed down. We need to wake up and really have our light be lit up. The world needs people who are lit up in the right way. So that's where I rather go, you know, to the deeper place first and then come back to the physical life, the physical body, which just becomes naturally a result of our deep connection with the source, our deep connection with our purpose, our deep connection with that place that holds the spark for us to live the life that we are here to live and to serve our purpose that we are here to serve. So on that note, what I'm gonna do is, um, um, kind of going to go on Facebook and um, see if uh, there are any questions. So if you are watching on Facebook, um, let me know that you are here. Give me a thumbs up. And uh, I've this, um, or just say hi. I love to, it's nice to know, you know, this uh, technology is a um, little weird because we're talking into a screen and I love nothing more than talking to people. <laughs> so if you're here, give me a thumbs up, say hi, tell me what your thoughts are. And uh, so I'll be looking at uh, your comments on my cell phone here. I'm becoming tech savvy by necessity. And um, so um, for a comment, so what I'm gonna do at this point is um, I'm going to unmute if you all the, you know, you guys who are here, if you can unmute and let's have a conversation. And then I'm going to talk about the little, you know, a three session program that I put together that I'll talk about and how to access it and what, you know, the details about it. So, you know, tell me what in my talk, you know, first of all, what, what brought you to this webinar, what inspires you to attend and if what I said, it provoked a thought or lit a fire or it resonated with you and what that might be. So I'd love to hear from you. And also, if you're watching from Facebook, please say hello. Thank you, Hema, for being here. Um, yeah, so anybody who wants to. So Tammy, Michelle, Rajiv. Any one of you, just okay. put yourself I'm here. and. I'm here because of you communicated, number one. Yes. And you gave us the access to, I am curious, even though I'm a professional chef, mm -hmm. I am always intuitive about the good health, Ayurveda, because I try to promote Ayurveda through the cooking, sure. through the culture of food, food is a good vehicle for me to promote uh, the, even the Ayurveda in the perspective of the art of healing, cooking and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. so all those five, mm -hmm. uh, six taste buds and whatever we call, you know, everything in there. Yes, um, so that, um, I'm not gonna go yeah. on the perspective. And I want to learn more. Now, okay. since, since being a chef, I never had a time to be home this time or during the day and any time because I'm always at work. Mm -hmm. So nice. now, I want to, now I want to make the best of whatever I very, can. Very so good, I have you? Share whatever I can learn. Rajiv, do you have uh, my book? Which one? I wrote a book, it's called Healing Your Relationship with Food, The Ayurveda Answer. No, I don't, I don't. So I probably can... heard it first time. Okay, so you can go on to my website if you want a digital copy. You can just uh -huh. download it. Okay. And, yeah. So very good. I'm glad to hear it. Curiosity is where I want you to be. I want you to be curious. 
Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's what we don't know is going to make us grow. It's asking the bigger question is going to give us the bigger answers. If we are thinking that we know it all, we're never going to know anything. Mm -hmm. So the more we know, more we don't know. So really in asking the bigger question, the curiosity is a wonderful thing. Thank you so much for sharing. And uh, Michelle? So what was interesting to me is why do I want what I want? Um, I, I just, that's just a very interesting question when you go back to, do I want these things because I want them or do I want these things because I should want them, if that makes sense? Yes, it does. Um, so, and tying it all back into alignment and you know, my life's purpose, it's, it's, it, it was just an interesting question and struck me that way. Good, good, mm. good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I joined because um, one, again, you reached out. So I thought that was, that was great. And I wanted to get more integrated into, you know, a lot of the things that you, that you offer through your practice. And uh, since I'm studying Ayurveda, um, this is a good connection for me. Um, and, you know, continuing that dialogue, because as you said, right, Ayurveda is not just about food. It is so much bigger and, and, the, and the breadth of it is so large. Um, and I liked that you spoke about, you know, it's body, mind, spirit, right? Because I can, you know, we, I can just eat and, and work on the diet part. But if I don't have all the other elements that go into that, it, I think what you said about it's feast or famine, you know, you're, you do a diet or you do exercise or whatever, and you, you, you really discipline yourself to do that. And then, and then you, you, then you drop off and you don't do that. And why do we do that as, as a human, um, and be, and trying to get to that kind of like alignment and balance of, um, you know, doing those things because we're in alignment with ourselves and our soul and our, and our purpose, um, so it's, it's interesting to be able to look at each one of those levels, right? Physical. Yeah, it is. And then knowing how to integrate. So thank you so much. I love that. Um, you know, that's, that's what I wanted to stir. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to do was to stir thought because you, we don't mm -hmm. have the answers. We're going to get the answers by asking the questions and staying present with it. And then when the answers come, it's knowing, oh, that that's the answer that's what i've been looking for for that time and then you know what's the next you know then we continue to grow because the field of awareness is at the bottomless pit is ever expanding and that's where the light that's where the inner world is at so i think if we can go there and shift we can create shifts on the external level much more effectively and quickly and easier. To me, that's the shorter route. I think the longer route is when we continue to look to the external, you know, we all understand how that ended. Okay. It didn't end so well. <laughs> Sorry to say. <laughs> um, so, you know, these really are um, interesting times. I, mm -hmm. I had, had many times during the day and I think you know wow I really I really have no words sometimes sometimes I'm in awe sometimes I'm in shock and it's like a double take seriously you're living through these times wow so these are the best of times and the worst of times mm -hmm. all right well very good so what I have done is yeah Christina thank you so much for watching let me see who else is here uh, if you are here watching on Facebook, um, I'd love to have you say hello, Hema. Thank you for watching. And um, so what I, have, what I have put together is for the month of July, three weeks in a row, um, is uh, a group coaching program, three sessions, so that thought it would be easier to do. We're not at a place to make big commitments right now. Um, 
three two-hour sessions, and they got to be live, where we go to the very deeper level, as deep as we know, where we hang out in the bigger question, where we understand how to intuit, where we understand how to create the relationship with our higher self and with our gut feeling and what that means for us. And then second week, we want to see how that translates into our mental, psychological, emotional health. What does that mean for us? How our psychological health is a result of what we've been doing in the deeper place. So if we want to change the psychological health, if we want to become mentally and emotionally intelligent, then it's, you know, let the information come from a different place. Remember, we can't solve the problem from the level of the problem. And that's very true in Ayurveda. We don't solve the physical ailments from the level of the ailment. And that's not where it took place. It's showing up there. So I want, so at each level, I want to take you to a level below, to a level below. So when we come to our physical health, physical health, you know, under the umbrella of diet and exercise, big confusion there. But how do we get to that, that vehicle, our physical body that is housing our soul, that's, that can serve the soul in serving the higher purpose? So that's a very different way of looking at things instead of just thinking, which diet can I do now? Which food can I eat now? That is just such a boring question. It's, it's that question, it's, it's, that's not the question. Why do you want that in the first place? And where that inspiration is going to come from? So I think when we align, the inspiration is there. Um, that's, that's the process that I want to take people to. Because instead of giving, handing them out, um, you know, easy choices and things, what I really want to do is inspire you to be more of who you are. The diet and the body will work itself out. We'll give you plenty of information on that. But what I really want to do is to, you know, light your fire. So it, in, it inspires you to be more. It in, inspires you to, to show up more for yourself, to put more of yourself into your life. And so that program is going to be in July. The last three weeks in July, I have a little application that I want people to fill out. It's, uh, it's on my website. If you go under... The uh, healing services, then there is, um, Aruna just joined. If you go under the, my website, ayurvedahealingcenter.com, under the tab of healing services, you will see group coaching. And I have explained a little bit about the program. I have an application there for people to fill out. It has five questions. Uh, the application is there just so I want to make sure that you are at that place you're kind of sitting at the edge of that place where you're ready to shift. Not everybody is there, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to make sure that the program, what I have, it serves your need. It's a very specific kind of a program that it serves your need, that it expands you. So it's a, just, it'll take you two minutes to do the application, send it out to me, and in that, I have a question for you on what your preference, preference is for daytime or nighttime, and which day, so once I have that, then I can put together, okay, it's gonna be Monday night, seven to nine. And so that program, you know, deliberately de keeping it at the lowest cost possible is $97 to join. Um, that's, so you have two, uh, six hours of group coaching for that amount, just, and to work with me individually, not everybody can do that. It's $125 an hour. And actually, I don't even take clients just for one appointment. I take them based on a program so I can actually help them shift. So it's kept really, really cheap because I want more people to attend. And there will be limited space for this program because I want people who are attending for them to have sufficient time. Um, so they can um, get the, you know, air time, get the time with me so I can help guide them. So that's on my website. And um, so that's a program. And at this point, 
Let me see if anybody else has joined. So uh, go ahead and unmute yourselves. And if you have any questions, and I will send out the information as well. I would send an email uh, with the application, with the program that's coming up. And if you are interested in doing that, fill up the application, I'll get it. Then I will um, schedule. And then we're ready to go on the third, last three weeks of July, just one week each. So that'll give you a lot of food for thought. So your process that is happening, the process of transformation, it has a place to go. There's a direction to it. Instead of just being overwhelmed and confused and um, kind of stewing in that without a direction. So it'll give you there'll be a lot of space for you to expand your awareness and get clarity on your individual awareness. So that is what I have to share with you today. And if you have any questions. Please go ahead and ask, unmute yourself and ask. Aruna, thank you for joining. And um, if you can say a word or two. Hi, Aaron. Thank you so much for joining. Aruna? Okay, she's not there. All right, so you know, I this. So if you have any questions, we can hang out for another five ten minutes, and um, and if there is something else that I can add or I can start another program, there. So this program is happening. I'm also doing a putting together. I'm recording right now twenty one day guided meditation of a personal healing journey. So that'll be coming up, and yeah, I'll be happy to hear from you if you think there's other. Uh, things. Uh, hi, Seema. Thank you for joining. If you think there's, um, how else can I serve you? Ayurveda is so big. And in the, in the practice of Ayurveda, it's not a, there's not a specialization like, oh, I just give you herbs or I just give you nutrition. You can't do one without the other. The, it's, you have to look at the whole person. It doesn't take me an hour to prescribe somebody herbs. Okay, it takes me five minutes. The rest of the work is going deeper into their story and helping them transform. So maybe they don't even need the herbs one day. Um, so that's, you know, it's a whole big picture. So if you have um, other ideas or thoughts, um, let me know. Question. Sure. Uh, in these sessions, you are talking about six sessions, six hours, mm -hmm. or three two-hour sessions. Yes. Are they most likely going to be in the evenings? During what tentative timing you are looking at? It? You know, I'm either looking at weekday, weeknight, week, weeknight, seven uh -huh. to nine, or daytime, twelve to two. Or you mm -hmm. give me your time. In the application, there will be a question which is asking you which mm -hmm. evening you prefer. Because I can be flexible in designing it. So if mm -hmm. you give me the time, that might be useful for you. So just put that down and then see where everybody's at. Yeah, because my uncertainty of if I call for work, I have no schedule. Week to week, our schedule changes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because some days I go to work at four, five o'clock in the morning. I some days I'm working till midnight as a chef. So I don't wow, know. you have a very uh, important job to. Yeah, yes, it makes it hard to plan. Makes it hard to plan. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally understand that. Well, yeah. you know what? Go ahead and put that on the application, okay. and let's see where what we can do with that. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Any questions right now? No questions. Okay, is this what you had expected that I was going to talk about? Or you didn't know? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't either until I started um, talking because there was so much. I can, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah. 
but I just kind of want to take, I think I hopefully have taken you in a different direction mm -hmm. with this. And that's, that's actually, you know, that's what I wanted to do. Because I don't want to give you any more information. I don't want to fill your head with information. I want to fill your heart with fire. I think you stirred the pot very well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Well, great. Glad. Yeah, I'm glad because that's, you know, we, that's what we need. That's what transformation needs. It needs fire. It needs a pressure. So we can, um, there's something very important happening here. We don't want to be asleep to it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you very much. Hi, thank Thanks you for nice attending. Day. So stay tuned, stay, um, um, look out for the email. Okay. Uh, you'll be getting it tomorrow morning with the details and the application. So fill that out and send my way. And if you do attend, I really, really am looking forward to stirring a little bit more fire within you and see what we can cook up and what we come up with. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for attending. Thank and um, Thank you. Thank you for being here and I'll be in touch. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you.